Hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. Well, I would like to start by thanking Drs. Cookson and Gerard for the opportunity to, to be part of the faculty again. It's really been quite a bit of fun over the past couple of years and an, and an honor to be here. And, and these days are, are typically, um, you know, a great interaction. So as mentioned, the topic I'm going to speak about here is the biochemical recurrence. My financial disclosures are in non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, so not relevant for this topic. I'm really going to divide this into two parts. The first is to cover the natural history of biochemical recurrence, how we risk stratify patients who experience biochemical recurrence, and what we understand about um, how to define it. And the second part is to discuss the treatment of biochemical recurrence, specifically with salvage radiation therapy and salvage androgen deprivation therapy. I think it's very important to start by putting us on the page of understanding what is our AUA astro definition for biochemical recurrence after radical prostatectomy, and that is a PSA after surgery greater than or equal to 0.2 with a second confirmatory value greater than or equal to 0.2. So I think an important take home point is knowing what at least is the letter of the law by our AUA guidelines. Now that said, I think it's also important for us to acknowledge in clinical practice that not all patients who have a detection detectable PSA after surgery are at the same risk to experience subsequent disease progression. And with that concept of perhaps adopting a risk, a, a stratified definition of biochemical recurrence, the group at Cleveland Clinic put together this study, which looked at 14 different ways you might define biochemical recurrence and correlated it with patients' disease risk as estimated by a nomogram. So what they did was they generated curves like this. But fundamentally, they found that a patient's disease risk correlated significantly with the definition of biochemical recurrence that best predicted future clinical progression. So for example, if you plug the patient's clinical parameters into the nomogram and you found that their five-year progression-free survival was estimated to be less than 50%, so a patient with high-risk disease, the best definition for biochemical recurrence was a single PSA greater than or equal to 0.05, quite low. On the other hand, if a patient had a nomogram predicted five-year progression-free survival greater than 90%, so a low-risk disease patient, the best definition of biochemical recurrence was a PSA greater than or equal to 0.4 and rising. So a very important take home point that I want to leave you with here, and we're going to come back to this when we talk about treatment, is that we may use a lower threshold of PSA to define biochemical recurrence and more practically to treat biochemical recurrence in patients who have higher risk disease. So know the AUA definition, but be able to risk stratify it in clinical practice. One slide on biochemical recurrence after radiation therapy. Know the definition, which is a Phoenix criteria, Nader PSA after radiation plus two. And in terms of decision making about further treatment, the question should be asked, is this a patient who is a candidate for salvage local therapy? If yes, then document local recurrence with MRI and prostate biopsy. Do a metastatic evaluation, which most commonly now is PSMA PET scan. What do we know about biochemical recurrence after radical prostatectomy? It's been reported to occur in up to 35% of patients who undergo surgery. Now, as in recent years, we shift our surgery towards more higher and higher risk disease. It'll be interesting to see what that number does in the future. But what's critical to know about the natural history of biochemical recurrence is that it is heterogeneous, meaning biochemical recurrence nearly always comes before systemic progression and death from prostate cancer, but biochemical recurrence certainly does not always universally translate into systemic progression or death from prostate cancer. These patients are older, they have competing risks of mortality, and those need to be factored into this. And in fact, one study demonstrated that patients with biochemical recurrence were as likely to die in the next 15 years from their competing risks as they were from prostate cancer. In terms of understanding that natural history and time course, this was a nice observational study that gets often quoted as known as the POUND study. It's an observational study that was published from Johns Hopkins of 304 men who experienced biochemical recurrence and really received no further therapy until the time of developing metastatic disease. Mean follow-up here was a little bit over five years. And what they found was that just about a third of the patients with biochemical recurrence progressed during that time to metastatic disease. But some very nice numbers that have come from that which are often quoted and I think are good to know and keep in mind, was that the median time in this untreated cohort from biochemical recurrence to metastatic disease was eight years. The median time from metastatic disease to death from prostate cancer was five years. So you can see the quite prolonged time window 
from biochemical recurrence to death from disease of 13 years, again emphasizing the importance of considering competing risks of mortality. We had an interest in the long-term natural history of biochemical recurrence at Mayo Clinic as well. We looked at a little over 2,400 men with biochemical recurrence who were followed a little over 11 years. And what we found was that 15 years after biochemical recurrence, the cancer-specific survival was 84%. Again, speaking to the importance of understanding that prolonged and often favorable natural history that these men can experience, a quarter of the patients in our cohort did receive salvage therapy at the time of biochemical recurrence and before clinical documented systemic progression, which raises the question, can salvage therapy at biochemical recurrence interrupt that natural history from biochemical recurrence to metastatic disease? A follow-up study that was published by the Hopkins Group of 635 men with biochemical recurrence had 238 who did get salvage radiation therapy. Again, not a prospective randomized trial, but an observational cohort study from which we can derive perhaps hypothesis generating conclusions. Median follow-up here was nine years after surgery and six years after biochemical recurrence. And what they found, again, in retrospective data, was that those patients who did receive salvage radiation therapy had significantly improved cancer-specific and overall survival. So perhaps instituting salvage local therapy may interrupt the natural history of biochemical recurrence. Now, I talked about the importance of thinking about risk-stratified definitions of biochemical recurrence. It's also important that we think about patient risk stratification. This was a nomogram that was developed from a multicenter experience to predict the risk of death from prostate cancer among those men who experienced biochemical recurrence. The data set included a little over 2,200 men with biochemical recurrence who were followed for approximately four years after biochemical recurrence. And these are the components of the nomogram. I present it to you as a clinical tool for use in practice, um, seeing and counseling patients. The nomogram includes age as a sort of nod towards the competing risk. It includes some PSA and timing parameters, time to biochemical occurrence, doubling time, preoperative PSA, and then pathologic criteria from the radical prostatectomy specimen. Now, a second and I think much more simple and user-friendly risk model was recently published by the EAU. And as opposed to nomograms, they define risk according to risk groups, high-risk biochemical recurrence and low-risk biochemical recurrence. And I find this quite a clinically useful tool. Two factors, low-risk biochemical recurrence would be a PSA doubling time greater than a year and a pathologic Gleason score from surgery less than eight. High-risk biochemical recurrence, either one of the opposite parameters. In fact, this group has already externally validated this risk group model in over 1,000 men undergoing surgery with long-term follow-up. And you can see from the curve here, the risk groups clearly separate patients' risk of cancer-specific survival following surgery. So again, a second risk tool, user-friendly, um, relying on just PSA doubling time and pathologic Gleason score. So now that we have that background about how we define and what we understand about the natural history of biochemical recurrence, let's talk about how biochemical recurrence can be treated first with radiation therapy. Our guidelines tell us that the effectiveness of radiation therapy is greatest when given at lower levels of PSA, hence the nod to early salvage radiotherapy. The data to support early salvage radiotherapy has come from several different series. This was one from the Radiation Oncology Group at Mayo Clinic. 1,100 men treated with salvage radiation and followed for nine years. Nice take-home statistic to know the overall five-year biochemical recurrence free in all comers following salvage radiation therapy is 50% but they did a further deep dive to say which patients had a particularly favorable outcome based on their pre-salvage radiotherapy PSA, and they used a cut point of 0.5, and you can see that patients who got what we would call early salvage radiation, radiation with a PSA less than 0.5, had lower risks of secondary biochemical recurrence, lower risks of developing distant metastatic disease, and lower prostate cancer-specific mortality. A second multicenter experience in almost 2,500 patients with five years of follow-up after salvage radiation, again, found a very nearly identical overall five-year biochemical recurrence-free survival of 50%, but really nicely illustrated the correlation between pre-salvage radiation PSA and subsequent biochemical recurrence-free survival. If you got radiation with a PSA less than 0.2, your five-year biochemical recurrence-free survival was over 70%, 0.2 to 0.5, over 60%, and then it went down from there. Early salvage radiation is better. Now, a clinical question that's received attention in recent years has been, should men getting salvage radiation also have androgen deprivation therapy added? We have a couple of prospective trials to inform us. This is a French trial which randomized men getting salvage radiation to six months of ADT or not. 
over 700 patients, over five years of follow-up, primary endpoint progression-free survival, and what the trial reported was that adding six months of ADT to salvage radiation significantly improved patients' progression-free survival. Hazard ratio here was 0.5. They published a follow-up with longer term um, in their series from the data set, and the results from the primary analysis were confirmed. Adding ADT to salvage radiation significantly improved progression-free survival. A second prospective randomized trial in this space, which has received a lot of attention, was done by Bill Shipley and the group from MGH. They randomized patients getting salvage radiation to two years of high dose oral bicalutamide. Again, over 700 patients, now median follow up 13 years, and the primary endpoint in this trial was overall survival. Very strong um, clinical endpoint here, and what they found. Again, adding ADT to patients getting salvage radiation, significantly improved overall survival, significantly decreased the risk of death from prostate cancer. So with that, our AUA guidelines were updated in 2019 to state that clinicians should offer hormone therapy to patients being treated with salvage radiation. Now, it remains a currently unanswered question. Should all men getting salvage radiation also get ADT? And there are a variety of ongoing investigations of this. One investigation has asked the question, what about that pre-salvage radiation therapy cut point of PSA? Can that be used? Well, there was a secondary analysis conducted of the Shipley RTOG trial, which looked at the PSA cut point of 0.6 as a prognostic marker. And what it found was that patients getting what we would call late salvage radiation, PSA greater than 0.6, did have a benefit when ADT was added to the salvage radiation. Patients getting early salvage radiation, PSA less than 0.6, no benefit to adding ADT in terms of improving overall survival, and actually worse other cause mortality because of higher cardiac and neurotoxicities. So maybe we can select, but again, we have to remember that's retrospective data. How about genomic classifiers? The Decipher genomic classifier has been used in a number of different places here. Um, this was, again, a secondary analysis of that same trial, where on about half of the radical prostatectomy specimens, they had Decipher scores. They found that the genomic classifier was independently associated with oncologic outcomes, and that confirms prior data. And when they combined the pre-salvage radiotherapy PSA and the genomic classifier, they were again able to identify a cohort of patients who seemed to derive a limited benefit from adding ADT. So if you had a PSA less than 0.7 when you got your salvage radiation and you had a low genomic classifier score, adding ADT did not prevent the development of distant metastatic disease, but in fact was associated with worse overall survival. Again, we have to remember those are retrospective data, secondary analysis, so more to come on this topic. How about adjuvant versus salvage radiation therapy here? Three prospective trials and a meta-analysis to inform us. This is the largest of those trials known as radicals. Almost 1,400 men with adverse features at surgery, randomized adjuvant or early salvage radiation, nearly identical five-year biochemical recurrence-free survival. Adjuvant radiation patients had worse continence and increased urethral stricture. These were put into this meta-analysis known as artistic, over 2,100 patients. Bottom line, no evidence that event-free survival is better with adjuvant radiation compared to early salvage radiation. And therefore, our guidelines last year were updated to state that clinicians should not routinely recommend adjuvant radiation after radical prostatectomy. I'll finish with a few slides on salvage ADT for biochemical recurrence. We have several retrospective and one prospective study. This was published by Judd Mal, a retrospective review of 1,300 plus patients with BCR. A quarter of them got ADT, follow up just about five years. In the overall cohort of patients, there was no benefit from salvage ADT to prevent the development of bone metastatic disease. But when they looked at specific what they called high-risk subgroups, Gleason 8 to 10, PSA doubling time less than 12 months. Again, think the EAU risk groups which came out 15 years later, there seemed to be a delay in the development of bone metastatic disease in these high-risk patients by adding early salvage ADT. Two recent uh, population sort of cohort studies, one on the left of a little over 2,000 patients with biochemical recurrence after either surgery or radiation, no decrease in all-cause or prostate cancer-specific mortality with salvage ADT. The study on the right of about 6,000 patients showed that in those patients with a rapid PSA doubling time, less than nine months, salvage ADT was associated with decreased all-cause and prostate cancer-specific mortality after both surgery and radiation. 
One prospective study to be aware of, known as the TOAD trial out of Australia and New Zealand, 293 patients with biochemical recurrence after either surgery or radiation. Some statistical considerations to be mindful of because the trial was closed early to accrual. But nevertheless, with five years of follow-up, they did show that the overall survival was significantly better with immediate ADT and biochemical recurrence versus two years plus delayed. How about our AUA guidelines? And I know these are going to be released here, and I don't want to take Dr. Cooks and Stunder, but our A2020 through updates have told us that for patients with BCR after exhaustive local therapies, we should be offering observation or clinical trial enrollment and not routinely initiating salvage ADT. But if you do use salvage ADT, it should be done with an intermittent as opposed to continuous approach. In terms of looking at the future of biochemical recurrence, we have two exciting late-breaking abstracts that will be presented at this meeting that I'd like to call your attention to. This is the PRESTO Phase three trial, looking at 504 patients with biochemical recurrence after surgery and a PSA doubling time of nine months, randomized to ADT, ADT plus apalutamide, or ADT, apalutamide, and abiraterone, demonstrated that intensive therapy did prolong PSA progression-free survival. Scott Egner will be presenting that data, and the EMBARC trial phase three will be on the plenary this year from Dr. Shore. Biochemical recurrence after either surgery or radiation, rapid PSA doubling time, randomized to ADT plus enzalutamide versus enzalutamide versus ADT, and the press release from this trial reported earlier this year that the primary endpoint of metastasis-free survival was met. So what do I want to leave you with in conclusion about biochemical recurrence? Know the AUA definition, but remember in clinical practice risk stratification. Natural history is heterogeneous, can be quite prolonged, so consider competing risks of mortality. EAU risk groups, Gleason score and PSA doubling time define high risk. Salvage radiation, if you're going to do it earlier, is better, less than 0.5. Offer ADT, particularly in higher risk patients. Sad, salvage versus adjuvant, most now favor sa a salvage based on our three trials. The role of genomic classifier continues to be defined. Salvage ADT alone, we have conflicting retrospective data. That TOAD trial was positive, but small numbers and some questionable accrual issues. So don't routinely utilize it, but if you do it, it should be with intermittent, and we have more to come as other agents are being tested. So with that, I want to stop, and again, thank you for your time and attention this morning.